person. Hello. So excited to have you guys here. So I am joined on the Refined Strength Podcast by a power couple in the Pacific Northwest, Emmy and John. Why don't you guys talk about just who you are and just like a little about yourselves and your story, your business. I let John introduce you. I was actually going to say you should answer this. <laughs> It is like we was always very excited to be on the podcast today, and it is a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting us. Um, I don't feel like we are our couple, but <laughs> uh, we are a bodybuilder couple. But we love, absolutely love what we're doing. Um, we based in the Pacific Northwest in Washington, actually. It's not uh, Washington, D.C. Washington, Seattle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How far are you guys from Seattle? Um, we're about 45 minutes. Okay, cool. And that's where your gym is as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we, are, um, we just opened our gym yesterday. We have a coaching team, and we are looking to further. So we pretty much um, bodybuilding is our lives and yeah that is all about us <laughs> we do that for fun that's what we do for fun that's what we do for living <laughs> that's what we love <laughs> so, we how know. long have both of you been competing cutting out a little yeah i think your service are, do, are you guys connected to wi-fi yeah we are yeah. okay i'm not sure because i i typically don't have issues in here because it's my studio but there's a way. Mm-hmm. It says that our record, your recording is is more is higher quality than it's that it seems that it is. So hopefully it'll be okay. Can you guys hear me like yeah. in real time? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I'll just edit that part out. It's okay. <laughs> um, how long have you both of you guys be, both been competing? Yeah. Yeah. Twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. Yeah, I started competing in 2017, six months after I had my son. And how many kids do you have? You have a lot, don't you? Five between the two of us. Talking about Five between the two of you. Are they all yours or are they from previous as well? We have a blended family. So I have two and John has three. Nice. And tell me just like about how like when you started competing in 2017, how you just evolved to where you're at now because now emmy you are you've gotten quite the season behind you now and i'm sure you have more plans for this season but you're a pro bikini competitor you've gotten all top fives this year and three of those or four of those have been in the top three right so tell me about just like your journey from when you first started to now so much have changed (laughs) So much have changed in every way, honestly. Um, physical growth, obviously, and a lot of that is mental growth. Um, I started competing as kind of like not very, um, it's like kind of like an escape for my life back then. It, I wasn't in my happiest place ever. It's actually pretty dark sport. Um, I was in a very abusive relationship. I, I was in a toxic marriage and um, everything in my life is all uncertain. Um, I, even if most day I don't, I, I worry about my safety and all. So, Bodybuilding gave me that um, outlet to let me feel like, hey, it is one place where I can feel safe, where I feel capable, where nobody can tell me that I can or, or I couldn't do anything. And I know for sure if I put in the work, I will get some certain result. So it gave me a lot of sense of certainty. And that's how I, I started. And so I was pretty obsessive. And, um, you know, when you do it that way, I, I always say the body follow the mind. I do pretty great. I, I think I did pretty good. I have 
a lot of post plays at regional show placing and all. But it's just so much different. Um, when I met John four years ago, four years ago, um, obviously I, I, I got out of the relationship. I grow and I heal so much inner healing and, and I have John and it's just so much different when you operate from the surviving, like survival mode, and now you switch to thriving mode. Now I'm not thinking, what do I do to survive the day? I start thinking about like, I can do more. I, I could do more and I start believing myself. Maybe I'm not that broken person that that my, my ex-husband told me that I am. Maybe I'm capable of more and John had me to believe more in myself. He believed in me and he's unwavering belief in me give me confidence and at first it's the world confidence on him and now I actually feel that confidence in myself. Um, long story short, now bodybuilding to me is a one, it is different. It's not an escape anymore. I absolutely love the sport. Um, and my de definition of success also evolved. I used to want to like win, you know, and now it, it is my su success to me mean, hey, I want to achieve this and this and this so I can inspire other people so I can lead other people around me or somewhere in the world, even if they don't talk to me, if they look at my journey and say, hey, it's not too late to start. She's 35 years old and she can still compete with a 20 years old. She has five kids and still, still can compete. She can own a business. She can coach. Uh, she can come out of a 10 years abusive relationship where people tell her she's never going to achieve anything in her life and she can still be here. If she can do that, maybe I could too. And I just want, if one person say that, then I would feel that I'm successful. It's not about being Olympia stage. It's not about winning pro show to me. It's about inspiring people. So that is how my mindset have evolved since day one until now and I couldn't be happier with with where I'm at right now. It's interesting because you you talk about your mindset before so like when you first started competing it was all about just winning and escaping and just control yeah. and obviously you had some success early on you you got your pro card when did you get your pro card? Uh, December 2021 at national at uh, okay. And then your first pro season, not that successful, right? I, I relate to that. I also did not have a great first season. Um, but now your focus is not so much on winning, but you're as successful as you've ever, you, you're more successful than you've ever been. You're very close to that Olympia qualification at 35 with five kids, you know, with multiple businesses going on. So it's almost like that letting go of control helped you be your most successful self instead of being so obsessed with winning. I owe all this to John. You are right. Absolutely. Um, the part of me, I still have that a little bit. Of the, like, yeah, obviously. <laughs> but, you know, um, John, he's more than just, he's more than my, he's more than the husband. He's my mentor. He. He teach me a lot and he nurturing and, and, and really helped me to grow mentally. Even just like at my last show, you know, like even though honestly, I would be happy with whatever blessing because I know for the fact before I even step on that stage that mm -hmm. I bring my absolutely best. I know it. But a small part of you, you can't help it. You are human. I did shed some tear. I did feel bummed out and I don't want to sound like I'm not humble. It's like, why should she even be upset at second place? Like second place is hard, man. You can <laughs> feel it. You can envision it. You can almost touch it. It's so close that you can't help it. You feel a little bummed down. And John had the talk with me right after I get off stage. I always do whenever I go through that, either, either very high or very low emotion. The first person I, I speak for when I jump off stage is, where's my John? Where, where is he? And I would jump on, on him and he tell me, 
maybe it's, you wish that it go either way. Maybe that's that what you want, but God plan for you is different. And a lot of times you think like you, you pray for some certain outcome, you pray for some certain result and God doesn't give it to you in your timing. He have different plan for you. And it's, <laughs> it's not easy to always trust that. But he said, just trust in him. Just, just go back to that. Go back to your home. Go back to your heart and know that anytime we trust in God and let him let his master plan play out. It's all way better for us anyway. So just trust in that. And and you're right. When we just let go of the control, and for me, particularly, is let go of the control and let God come in, God will lead the way, then it's always play out better than it's ever been. What do you feel like, and I would, I don't, John left the screen for a moment. I'll ask him when he comes back, but... Um, what do you feel like is the source of that support for like mutual support for in both of you? Like why, why does he believe so much in you and your, your persistence and your relentlessness when, especially from where you've, you know, how has that been a constant since you've started with him? That's a good question for him. <laughs> Where do you think it came from? And then when he comes back, he can answer it. Because um, that's a self, it's a very selfless act, I think, to be so supportive and so relentless in something that, as expensive and as taxing <laughs> as bodybuilding, right? Like, you know, pro shows, yeah, we don't pay for entry fees, but we pay for almost everything else, right? You're You're paying for coaching, you're paying for the travel and everything that goes with the show, your suit, tan, makeup, hair. And that's, it's also a big emotional toll. So what do you feel like you guys have built? Like, how would you describe that mutual support and how you guys like just peacefully do that together so well? To me, honestly, um, I, I would ask him when he come back, but to me, I love him so much and um i honestly have more joy and and feel happier when i watch him on stage and watch him win and watch him achieve things in life more than even myself and and honestly weirdly i i turned somebody pro last year at usa and when i watch her turn pro same thing. I watched my husband win an overall last weekend, and it it made my heart explode. I cry more than I I would when I turn pro, and um, I don't. I I think it's more than just just love. I think human, uh, we can admit it or not. We have more joy from giving than receiving. Mm -hmm. We believe it. One of one of the most important aspects of humans need is um I feel like the contribution. You feel like you you're a part of something bigger than yourself. So he's here. Mm -hmm. Rachel I have a question for you. Um but I do, I, I do, I do love this guy more than anything in this world. And like I always said, nothing means anything without him. So I I would do the same for him. I I I think I have been. I just really really want to su support him on everything he do, and I know he do the same for me. So she, she I gotta have her repeat the question because you need the scene. And she, yeah. Right, we're like the only ones here. So oh, uh, that's okay. Do your thing. Out. I mean, let me know. There's somebody here, so I, I know. <laughs> yeah, you're good. I, so the question was, you know, she was, Emmy was talking about the, um, the, the support that you have and how, how automatic it is and how deep and like aggressive that support is when, you know, you're pushing her to, to just keep going and keep going. Where do you feel like that comes from? Like where, cause it's, it's hard oftentimes in a couple of people or even just friendships sometimes. Um, to support someone when it is a sport that takes a lot out of us, you know, it can take out of our relationship, it can take out of our business, 
can take out of a lot of things. So where does that support for you come from? How do you, why do you believe in Emmy so much? I felt myself getting emotional when you were talking. So I'm trying, I don't want to like cry. Oh, <laughs> I feel like, I don't know, I don't know why I, I feel that, but. You cry in our um, wedding and I didn't. <laughs> yeah. You should have cried too. I, I, I cried. I keep trying. They, they said soft smile, and here I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just, you know, I've always struggled to believe in myself, honestly. Um, you know, every time I do a show, I don't. I'm not one of those people who thinks I'm, I'm, I'm prepping to like come for it all and win and blah blah blah. I just don't. I don't feel that. I'm just like I'm just gonna work hard and and you know present my best, and it is what it is because I I don't really I have a hard time believing in myself, but. I don't have a hard time believing in Emmy. I just, for me, it just, I see something special inside of her that, um, you know, that I, I believe she's capable of, you know, whatever she puts her mind to. I've seen her, um, you know, when she's prepping and she's working hard. She never really makes me feel like I'm, you know, off to the side or like, you know, on the back burner. I, I'm glad because I think that, yeah, that would hurt my feelings if I felt that way. Like if she was tunnel vision on it. But um, I always feel like I'm included, like I'm not shut out. And just seeing how hard she, she works and still able to be balanced in life and not forget about me or the kids or business or clients. I mean, she doesn't drop anybody. And, uh, but yeah, just seeing her execute and, um, you know, it, it, I just see something special in her and I believe that I, I, I would rather personally invest more of my energy and, and time and, and money in her and her competing than myself, just because I just, it doesn't make logical sense. Like I, I believe in her more than I believe in me. So if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna go all in on somebody, I'd rather pick the person I believe in more. And so <laughs> I, I don't I just believe in her more than like it doesn't mean I don't feel good about myself at, at all or something, but I just mean that I don't know. I I I've chased my own thing before and I've tunnel vision on on like bodybuilding and other things in life. I never felt happy when I was doing it for me and just pursuing my thing, like just when it felt like I was all about me, those were pretty unhappy times. And I never really got the outcome I wanted either. So it's like, why do that anymore when I could like let my wife in, support her, like go all in on this with her to see like how I can help, like how, what do I need to learn? What do I need to watch? What do I need to see so that I can critique her and give her my absolute best so that she can be the best she can be. And that's why I've had to like learn the division and <laughs> like, you know, just, really dive into it because if I don't know anything, then I can't really help her. So yeah, that's I think that's a really special thing that has to be present with couples like you guys, you know, people that own a business together or multiple businesses together, but also a very high level competitor at the pro at the top of the ranks. Right. And you know, she does have potential to go to the Olympia, obviously, because she's very close. And yep. I think believing in someone and like manifesting something like Olympia qualification is only as good as the action behind it. And I think you said something really important. There is like when you're only working on yourself, you're not as happy as you are when you're working towards something for her but working some working towards something for our spouse or a partner or a friend is it like Emmy was saying earlier, like she loves giving and she's like, she's a big giver and she thinks that that's when people are happiest is when they're giving. And so now both of you have said those things and it's like, you're both giving and you're both achieving more than you ever have before. Cause John, I've watched you through a lot of shows since I've DJed a lot of shows that you've done and I don't think I've ever seen you win an overall like you did last week, right? Like, was that your most successful show? I, I've won overalls before, but it wasn't. I felt really good about the field of competitors. And like, it just, I felt like I brought a much better look personally. So it was much more satisfying. I kind of like lost, lost a little bit of my fire for a bit and kind of lost, um, you know, I just, 
I needed the win without realizing I needed it. I didn't, I didn't really, I tried to like, I'm okay. If I don't win, like I, I'm all good with it. I, I decided that going into it, I'm just going to do my best and it is what it is. But like when I won, it felt really, it felt really good. Just, you know, just to feel like, Hey, yeah, you know, I'm, I watch my wife be great all the time. So it's like, it, it, it's, I'm never going to like, man, I almost had that pro show, but <laughs> it's not probably going to happen for me. And I don't mean that in a pessimistic way, but I just mean that it, you know, it feels good to do something cool and, and feel like, Hey, I can do cool stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe well, not. You're able, like I said, you're able to do that and have it feel the best it's ever felt because you're both giving so much to each other for yeah. the individual, but also for the collective goal of just like fucking kicking ass as a couple, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. What, what is the hardest part about being you guys and on the track that you guys are on working together, competing together in the same prep? What's the hardest part? Um, okay. The hardest part is, um, Individually or, or as a couple? Individually. Um, the mental aspect of it. Uh, my body never responds this well on a prep. I physically, I'm 100% happy and I know that I can keep going. But competing at this level, um, everybody have to keep the genetic <laughs> structure, uh, work ethic you don't really edge people out by those things. It's a given. Um, everybody has it. So honestly, a lot of it come from here. You know, um, if you only happy when you win, if you can't handle the up and down, the, the loss or the not so great blessing, then, then you shouldn't even think about compete at this level. It, um, like we said, we, we learn more from the loss and the win, obviously. But when you compete at any sport, I, I, I feel like most of us lose more than we win. And um, this is definitely not the sport for the pain of heart. Um, you really have to use every opportunity, the, the win or the loss, as an opportunity to, to learn something. What do you learn from it? So you can come back to stage better. And to me, it, I, I, I hold myself to such standard where sometimes it's hard to breathe. Um, it is my strength, but also my weaknesses. Uh, I hold on. <laughs> on a, yeah. Uh, because I expect a lot out of myself, then, then I am where I'm at. Because I expect a lot out of myself, I also am the coach I am. Um, the, I always tell people that, hey, I expect a lot out of myself. I don't ask you for the same thing, but I also hold every of you to higher standard. So I'm pretty strict. I'm pretty picky on a lot of things. I'm, I'm pretty specific on a lot of things. I'm very direct. There's, I'm not rude. I'm not mean, but I'm very direct as a coach. So uh, come back to what you you, you said, like, I put a lot of pressure on myself. I don't compare myself to others, but I always feel like I'm not good enough. And and so that's why, to me, mental aspect is the hardest one for me. So that's why I need John. I When I say I can't do this without John, a lot of people think it's like just another sweet thing to say. People say that all the time on Instagram. I literally mean it. I can't. Like, I need him. Like, people say, oh, why don't you just go compete by yourself? I say, no, that, that is not my thing. That is our thing. We do this together. I have no shame admitting that I need him to mentor me, to nurture me, to help me to stay stable, to to believe in myself, and to have, like, to level head myself into shows. Um that is the most important aspect to me, like to, to keep myself like healthy in the head. So I'm not too crazy straight out and and just to, to, to walk up, I would say, into show. Mm -hmm. do, do you think? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that the hard 
hard for you? I used to compare myself with other people a lot in the beginning of, of this journey, like for the first year. So that was a struggle back then. I no longer compare myself to others, so that's good. And But one thing that, that the hard things for me is trying to control my thoughts to only focus on things that I can't control and not focus on things that I can control. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess the hardest part for me is... Um, nowadays it's with her um as a husband like there's a lot of things i can give her like i can probably get her anything she wants to some extent like you know depending on how expensive it is but but i get there's still a possibility no matter how much <laughs> it costs there's a possibility that i can make it happen um, but with this you know with the pro shows and winning i can't i can't give that to her and it's tough when your wife wants something that you can't give her like, no matter what I do, I can't make it happen. Like, I can't, I can't give her this thing that she wants. And, and I know that it's not, like, luckily, I know that it's not some unhealthy obsession with wanting, uh, like, to go to the Olympia or something like that. I know that she would just like to go, and it'd be cool, and it'd be a great achievement, and, be, you know, something we'd always remember. But I feel like it's it's wanted at a healthy level, which makes me feel like, more comfortable supporting her because i feel like the wants are are healthy but yeah it's just a the knowing that no matter how many like we could do 20 more pro shows and there's no guarantee that she could win yeah. now yeah. i believe she will sooner than later it's still not like you know how bodybuilding is it all depends on who shows up um what judge panels there in the in the ifbb it, it's much more important like who are the judges and do they like your look? Like yeah. you, you want to pick certain shows based on who's judging it because they're known to like your look or not. Um, everyone, we're all humans. We all have a different subjective thing that we like. Of course we have the criteria. Yeah. So, but, so it's you not know, just, just that. Yeah. It's just like, um, but, but like I said, it's just knowing that I don't have control. All I can do is support her to the best of my abilities and hope that it happens because you love you you want you know for the people that you love you want them to have the things that they want if you want them if they're like trying so hard for something or they just want something really bad like you you know you'd love to see it happen if you love them but um you know with this there's only so much i can control and i can only control how i support her and i do my best with that i'm not always perfect but um no, I can do better, but you know, that's about it. So it's tough. It's just tough knowing there's, there's just, I don't, can't do anything. Yeah. I think a big part of that is just like the, the way that you guys can succeed in that and that art, you are succeeding in that and continuing to get better is like kind of just the dropping of the ego and the, the thought that you, that we can control everything. Like we can't control what the judges say. We can't control who shows up. Or anything but like you can control how you how you john like give that support but also how emmy like receives it because i think a lot of times and when there's a dynamic where both people are incredibly just high achievers and like really busy maybe like similar personalities where they really want a lot and they like have high standards for themselves it almost it can turn into a competition if there's too much ego involved. You know, like if you had really, you know, if you were bitter at all for the fact that like Emmy is successful as a pro and you don't have a pro card yet, it wouldn't work, right? You wouldn't be able to show up for her as much as you would. And she also wouldn't need you as much because she wouldn't be getting that support that's so helpful for her. So it really is like such a beautiful give and take that you guys have that I think a lot of people who who are like who are competitors especially but really anyone in in like a high achieving type track like this is just like being able to communicate and like fully show up for each other without that ego yeah i i did struggle for a period of time like when we we our first year i got an overall and she just won she won a class she never won an overall and then we went to do our first natural show I got like third call out and she got first call out. And after that, it was like, dang, she did a lot better than me. Like, I just, I'm, 
sure, I'm like an emotional person. I think weird stuff, but I can't deny. I can't deny logic. Like I'm like, oh, yeah. it's better than me. Like I can't argue about that. It's literally there. It is. So I just thought we do another show, and we try again. I bet you, if I do it with her, she'll do it, and she'll get her pro card. I bet. And I knew I wouldn't. Like I, I didn't. Well, I can't say I knew it, but like. I just felt like I wasn't there yet, but I was willing to try again and support her and prep with her. And then when she got her bro card, I did have a little period of time where I was like, wow, you know, she, I wanted that and she got it. And I, I wanted it probably more than her. And <laughs> like, I, I, I'm not saying I worked harder, but I probably did. But, <laughs> but I, you know, I want more. Logically, but open bodybuilding is a lot different than bikini. <laughs> there's just, there's, di they're different, but yeah, I know what you mean. I didn't get it. And so I, I did have a hard time at first actually like dropping. I wanted to be the star, you know, like in my life, I kind of wanted to, be, <laughs> you know, and at some point I realized like, maybe, you know, I believe that God has a calling for each of us and maybe the, the calling that I thought that I was trying to get, like I'm, I'm trying to be the star and trying to, you know, be, you know, do this and that. Maybe that's not who I'm actually meant to be because I seem to be more, um, I seem to be better at supporting other people and like, you know, through coaching and through, you know, my marriage. I feel like I'm a better, more gifted support character than i am i mean like i'm you know the star so at some point i just decided to commit like i don't need to feel like i'm in competition with my wife i'm not i'm not in competition with her i'm great in my own way whether i have a pro card or not or some this this certificate or that certificate or this place or that place like i'm great in my own ways and i just need to embrace who i am be happy with who god made me to be and support my wife the best to the best of my abilities and that's i just i said it for at first and i said i'd do it but like it took time to actually do do that like i'm for real like i'm i'm actually doing that i'm not just talking yeah and i think that's like that's where a lot of people just never get to is like they say it or and yeah. they talk about it but they can't actually be there and like fully show up for for their partner in that supportive role instead of a competitive role and like, it's hard quieting those thoughts of jealousy of, you know, inadequacy or whatever. But like, you know, you talk about feeling like, you know, the supporting character versus main character, just that thought alone, I think is what makes you into a main character because you're main character in each other's lives. And yeah. like all of the people that you help, like your, your clients, your, you know, the, the gym, like that shit makes you that main character and it's 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 because of dropping that ego and dropping that like competitiveness with someone you don't need to be competitive with yeah absolutely I agree. what is your favorite part of your life right now it's our relationship our relationship is my is my favorite part um <clears throat> i feel like um yeah, that is the core of everything to me. That is the center of everything I do. Um, I love that. Um, I love him like more and more each day. I love that we grow together. I love that we pursue everything together. And I just love the person I am with him. That's my favorite part of our life. How are you? Yeah, mine's completely different. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you don't have to say the same thing. <laughs> no, I, I I can say the same. I, I mean, it's kind of cheesy. I don't know. Like, it sounds like, okay, guys. <laughs> like, um, yeah, we've heard it. But, um, no, nah, for me, it's the same. It's just like, uh, I like having uh, somebody that I see as my best friend pursuing things with me and able to it doesn't feel forced and it doesn't feel like she doesn't want to do we we seem to like i don't know luckily we like the same things we're interested in the same things we 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 are up for all the challenges that we have in our life and uh, i like you know tackling them together and just being able to do all of this it, it, our relationship and and her being a part of it gives 
you know, part of everything I do kind of gives it meaning. I feel like I wouldn't really, I wouldn't care enough about, you know, say opening a gym or doing certain things in life if I didn't have her to like yeah. be a part of it. And for one, I, it feels good to have someone to help you. Um, it feels good um, to have help. But secondly, it's like the idea of building something with her um, is the thing that makes things give me more motivation to do it and makes it seem more attractive. Cause it's like, I don't know, just pursuing stuff for me and build like building things for just me. Um, I just, it just doesn't motivate me enough to actually do it. Like I, I sure like it's cool to like do cool stuff and have be thought of as someone who is capable and, and you know, successful and whatnot. But I just don't, I don't care about that. Like, I just don't care about what people think about me so much or, or, um, you know, I, I just want to feel good about what I'm doing, who I am. I want to be proud of myself. I want Emmy to be proud of me. And I mean, if she, as long as she thinks that I'm a good man or, or I'm not successful and I'm these things, then, you know, the more people you care, like what their opinion is, the harder it is to please everybody and it's yeah. impossible. And like, I would rather just be like, hey, I'm going to leave it up to Emmy. Like, am I good? Am I, am I doing the right things? Um, if, if I just keep it between me and her and, and that's the only opinions that I really listen to for the most part, it's a lot simpler than like trying to chase all this affirmation from so many different people. And it's, and I have done a little bit of that and it never works and I always fail. But I, and it, you know, well, it some, doesn't give you that sense of accomplishment like it does when the person like Emmy in your life gives you that, right? Like the people, as long as they're like good people, in our lives that we really care about their opinion like that. Like, I think I agree. It should be very few people, if not just like that partner alone, that gives us that sense of like, all right, I'm doing a good job. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Well, I think it's also like, it's common for men, especially, but also, also women who are very like independent go getters of just like wanting to feel like I did it all by myself. Nobody helped me. And, that's cool for those people, right? But it's it's just so much more gratifying, I think, knowing that someone wa not only helped you, but wanted to help you and wanted to see you succeed. And if you give that to others, like they're gonna give it back, assuming you, you do it with the right people. There's some people that are just takers, unfortunately, and sometimes we learn the hard way with that. Um, you know, I've, I also came from a, a toxic marriage where I had, this pretty much the same thing It's just like someone who really wanted me to stay small and wanted me to like be someone that I wasn't and I believed it for a while until I left and realized just like the power I have by myself and I think once you realize that you're so much more open to finding that person that gives you back more power and so you can just like be this like energy exchange thing yeah. together. Yeah. Absolutely. So tell me about the gym. What made you guys want to open a gym while Emmy is going in her pro season of all seasons and you're prepping for shows too. And you also have a coaching business. Like what made you guys decide to do that? It's been crazy. <laughs> is we not busy enough? Well, <laughs> Told us that our gym was closed. Yeah, so like, it's selfish. But I was like, I, I don't want to work out at a, like, I don't, where are we going to work out? I don't even know. So let's just, hey, should we open our own? Yeah. Like, do our own gym? Like, yeah, honestly, we, I always think God has, has a way to sometimes I'm almost like shut door in front of you and force you to open your own door or he will open the next door for you. But like, close all the door instead of like take take option away from you and yeah, what are you gonna do now like 
to do because it's like you get so distracted. We talk about opening a gym. He and Je- there as a joke or like just a thought for over the years. We did talk about that. Me out the, the thought yeah. of it stressed me yeah. out. Yeah, so okay. we never we never pursued with that. And sounds he, like a lot of work. He had uh, his family have a construction, like bodybuilding. Uh, not bodybuilding. I'm sorry, house building business. Mm-hmm. So we, honestly, not like too wealthy, but we do great financially. We have an online business like coaching with no like actual rent or anything. So there's no reason for us to continue to pursue that thought of like, hey, yeah. open a gym, yeah, right? We're good right now. We're good. So we just chilling, doing our thing. And then literally the gym gave us one week notice, the gym that we go to in, here locally. And we said, like, oh no. What are we gonna do? We we do not like Planet. I'm sorry if you're a Planet Fitness fan. I'm so sorry, but <laughs> that's not my kind of vibe. <laughs> it's like okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we can survive it, but it's just not our thing. And also, I do have a great amount of competitors that I coach locally that come see me for in-person posing. Sure, I can pose at home, but I like to separate business and home. Uh, we also have five kids, so that's limited. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, so it's almost like God shut all the door. And now we're just like, wow, we actually have to take, take action. We actually have to take the risk here. Mm-hmm. So we talk about that. And, uh, well, long story short, here we are pouring everything we have financially, um, everything <laughs> into it. And... Uh, John have a vision and like sitting. Okay, now it's making me emotional. Sitting here in this in this gym, um, he made our vision come true. Better than it, it. I have a thought, and why let allow me to pursue my pro career? Um, I didn't. I get in the season, didn't have any expectation. I don't have one. Obviously, after you placed, after I placed third in Wasatch, over 30 state people line up, then I start thinking, holy moly, maybe I need to take my season a little bit more like serious. Maybe I can wait here. And John and my coach, Jamie Bernal, she's like, they were like, yes, you can. And okay, and then yes, that four show later we won. We are so freaking close from the the qualification. But among all of that, like I hardly do much. I I love to take more credit on this process of opening a gym. Now that the gym opened, yes, I do a lot of administration and billing and all. Because that's what I'm more um familiar with because I work in the fitness industry, I managed a gym for like over 10 years. So yeah, now I do more, but all of this, all of this is in this man's hand. Like he, he do all of that when I was on prep, um, he takes the extra load. So like in the relationship, there's never 50-50 ever. And I would say over the last year, he give 80 or 90 and I give 10. And um, I don't really feel that way, but I, I do. <laughs> don't worry, guys. And, giving more than that. And we we talk <laughs> we talking about when when we in a relationship. Sometimes it's like kind of like deposit in a bank. We we say that like over the years, I have deposited, I have invested, I have do the extra. There's period of time like <laughs> last and where he competing a lot. Like I do the extra. Mm-hmm. I take care of the kid. I go above and beyond. I maybe take the day off so he can go when we don't have anybody to watch the kid, things like that. So now this year when I do the same thing, it doesn't feel too bad because it doesn't feel one-sided because we take turns. You can't just both be selfish at the same time. We can't withdraw from relationship at the same time. We also grow to learn that communication through all of this in order to own a business together, coach together, I have to be comfortable not being the I can do it all by myself miss. Mm. I, I need to give up that identity, which I have 
highly embraced before I met John. I was like, I can do all of this by myself. I would never let anybody know that I have a bad day. Uh, <laughs> like eyes and I still show up at my work smiling I don't need anybody to know in a way it's oh yeah I'm badass I'm strong am I because I'm hiding all of it I should have asked for help and yeah. in relationship right now I'm so comfortable asking for help we frequently setting aside time that there's no distract that we just literally talk like he would say what do you need from me do you need me to take extra on coaching do you need my help with the gym? Can I take more for you? Can I make dinner? Can I order the kid dinner so you don't have to make dinner? We do a lot of eating out for the kid, like DoorDash for the <laughs> Like, can you just Instacart all your groceries? That's what I do for the last year because my husband allowed me to, to save, to save me from the responsibility so I can do more like, okay, cardio, step posing, do more of things that I am very good at. I'm very excellent and talented at. Like, if you tell me to, like, 30 minutes to clean the house, probably not the most valuable time, that I, the way that I spend time. But if you give me that 30 minutes to maybe make an educational content uh, about posing or pose a client, I feel more fulfilled. I'm happier as a person because I just touched somebody's life. I'm horrible at cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> doing dishes and stuff so he allow me he, he he find he literally watch and invest and see what i'm good at and let me embrace that identity and let me use myself where i'm most comfortable where i'm most fulfilled at, and that how we can do all of this like prepping coaching and then open the gym so we we love this place, and if you're in the area, we would love to have you here. It's kind of like not bodybuilder, but I guess it's kind of bodybuilder life, but like vibe. Remind me of the city, the exact city that you're in. In Berkeley, uh, oh, Washington, okay. like Berkeley? near Bonnie oh. Lake area. Okay, got it. Yeah, the gym looks awesome. I'm excited to one day, if I'm ever in that area again, to visit it because it looks really cool. And you guys like just soft opened this week okay. yeah we okay. we and up on my show sunday at about 11 p.m and we opened the gym at 8 a.m the next day talking about crazy <laughs> yeah coming off a second place win and then open your gym yes yes. Crazy. yes i like the thing you said about just relationships not being 50 50 because i think that's a lot of what people seek in partners is someone who's going to give them always give them 50%. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, in, if you really look at that, like just how you described it, 50% isn't a lot. And it, it means that like, you're, you're completely torn in different directions as a person. Like I give 50%, only 50% to me and only 50% to my partner. But in reality, like, if you give more, like going back to the giving and receiving, if you're giving more to the other person, you you end up receiving more because now you have this like really beautiful mutual respect but also confidence that well i'm going to give as much as i can because i know she's going to give it back and vice versa yeah and i think that like there's there's a disconnect in a lot of couples or, or people that are seeking a partnership like that because they just think it looks different and they, they expect a lot more from someone without giving very much either. Yeah, yeah. And I also, like, not just in romantic relationship, I don't believe in, oh, I give what you, oh, I give back what I, what I receive. Mm -hmm. that, why don't you just give who you are? You just yeah. give, less, like, give what you want to give, give what you're comfortable giving, don't hold back. Don't try to adjust yourself based on other people. By, by saying that, you say you can be anything. You can be a great person to this person and you can be a horrible person to the other person. Like, are you just, what is that animal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, are you that? You're just changing based on the environment. Why don't you just have a solid idea of who you are? If you don't know, maybe spend some time alone and, and figure that out. And then lead true to that. Doesn't matter how people treat you. Doesn't matter how they act around you. Just give what you want to give and give who you are. 
you'd be much happier that way. That's just how I feel. So part of how, what I love about you guys and like in terms of more of your coaching team, cause you've been, how long have you really been coaching on like competitors? Um, two, 2000, like we start coaching competitor mid 2021. Yes. Okay. Yeah. John, you were coaching them before that, right? No. Oh, no, we do a lot for that. Okay. Yeah. So part of what I really love about you guys, and it comes back to like, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with you, Emmy, like at a show at some point in Washington is just how you show up as a leader for your clients and your, co and your, the industry in a very small bubble of bodybuilding that is the Pacific Northwest, but you do that without bringing others down. You know, you're, you're not the kind of coach that poaches clients or that talks down on other coaches or, um, you know, you don't have that gatekeeping mentality that I think a lot of coaches do have, especially if they coach a lot of local competitors. I see this, especially after being in multiple areas and like now being in Texas, which is such a bigger area for just bodybuilding in general. Um, so where do you feel like that comes from in terms of like how you built your coaching business relatively fast where you're, you're coaching at a high level as well as competing and running a gym where, you know, what made you want to start that and do it in that way? Uh, I let John answer a lot of that, but I, I will just give a big answer about what I'm thinking and then you can share your thought on it. Uh, for me, I wanted to start coaching because I have bad coaching experience. I'm not, not like bad, but I don't have great coaching experience. <laughs> and, I, and, and I just like, you know, we, we don't have to be this way. Um, we can pursue bodybuilding. We, like, I just want people to, to have more fun, to enjoy the journey and actually fall in love with the sport. And to me, I think, I think the reason why our team grow and the reason why we have the success in coaching as we do right now is because our focus is not about growing a team or growing the coach business. Our focus is on our people. Mm -hmm. If you focus on empowering your people, taking care of them, make sure they feel seen, make sure they feel heard, and treat them as your partner in this journey, instead of treating them like they beneath you, they need you, uh, dicta dictatorship kind of like, hey, do what I say, don't ask questions. Oh, you do this because everybody else in the team do that kind of like bullying your client, which I still see a lot, then, then your client, like I said, like come right back to what we said from the very beginning. The, the body follow the mind. If you make your competitor feel small, feel uh, scared, feel like, feel not confident, you know, like if they, if they feel that, feel unhappy, then they can't excel in this sport. This sport is hard enough. You have to build people up. I don't, to me, my focus is not bodybuilding. Anybody, not anybody, but a lot of people can write a training plan. A lot of people can write a diet, macro. You can go on Google, go on YouTube. Like there's a lot of apps. Like I do think that is important. It's I don't write a cookie cutter plan, but that's not the most important part. Body is not the most important part athlete building aids you have to nurturing people and have them grow educate them grow in every way that means answer the question explain the why over explaining things walk them through the step the more they know the more coachable they are and the better the healthier they are in the mind and to me, like every session of training, like get back to check-in, posing, that's a chance for me to nurturing these people, to give them more confidence, to make sure that I bring the best out of them. And because I focus on all of that, like our team growing without me even trying to, 
but I didn't want to have a big team. I, I, I had to almost like take that last year off unintentionally from bodybuilding. I wanted to compete last year, but our coaching grow kind of fast and it faster than I wanted, faster than I thought. So, okay, we need to really make sure that everybody feel like they need, to, they, they taking care of. I can't. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm also from a, a being aware of how much you can handle. How much, like last year, that's all I can handle. Now I'm in better mental state. I can handle a lot more than I can do all of this at the same time. So yeah, we grow because we focus on our athlete and we love them. And I would do this for free. If I do this for free, then do it and making money, yay. <laughs> right. And John, what about you? What's your take? He's going to but she pretty much like oh okay <laughs> you like went, 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 went. <laughs> oh i don't know if there was, if there was anyways i i'll just add that i agree with her that's pretty much uh the way i see it you know i try to connect with people um you know, that's the main thing is like i you know in a way clients will thank me they'll be like oh you know i couldn't do this without you you know thank you so much and in, in all reality it's like you no know, thank you in a way because it's like I, because of my ability to help you, I feel better about myself. I feel valuable. I feel like I'm, I'm, I matter, you know, like one of those things that you, it's a dark thought, but I'm just going to say it. You wonder, <laughs> no. you wonder who, you know, if something happened to you, you know, who would be, you? and that was kind of like one of those things that, you know, years ago I had, I, I was kind of going through a hard time in life and I thought that, and I, I thought, I don't know who would be there and I and I don't know what they'd say about me, but I feel like if they if they were talking about me and saying good things, then it would just be because I died. You know, like I I felt like there was really nothing good to say about me. And I felt like I felt pretty low like in life in general at that point. And now I can say that there would be people there that could say Good things about me and it would be true and i feel like um you know my life is more full of meaningful you know relationships and connection uh now and that's kind of like i really feel like that's one of the main points of life is to connect with other people and, and the way you do that is up to you if it's bodybuilding awesome if it's not bodybuilding and something else find a way because i guarantee your life is going to feel so much better when you're not in your own little, you know, uh, playing, you know, like you're playing a game and you're playing the story mode, like by yourself, single player, you don't do that anymore. Like there's the internet. You can like, you know, like, you know, when that came out and we could, I could play with other people, it was like, that's all I wanted to do. And now that's kind of how life is meant to be. It's like play with other people, like to some extent, uh, you know, we, we are, we have our social time and we have our us time and we're kind of like, uh, we protect both, you know, like we're really, like, hey, that's okay. Let's be social. Let's take care of people. Let's, let's talk. Let's go out and maybe do something with somebody. And then sometimes it's like, hey, let's, it's us. Like, let's just chill. Let's hang out. Let's talk. And, you know, just be careful of both and have your boundaries. But it is about connection. So that, that's what coaching is about for me. Um, and then I'll just touch on the, 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 the poaching type thing. We don't poach because I want someone to choose me. Yeah. If I have to keep. You're bad. Leave him for me. <laughs> like you didn't choose me. I can do. I, I I like got in your head. I told you that everyone has the ability to convince you that your coach is bad. Another yeah. coach, you know, he has you do how much cardio? He has you do how little cardio? You look at it. It's like you can literally flip anything that your coach does and say that it's wrong and say that I can do it better. <laughs> bad. Let's just not do that. Let's just say, hey, this is why I'm a good choice. Would you like to choose me? No, there's another coach for you. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I'm not. I, I we're not the coaches for everybody. There's other options out there that might be better for a, a specific individual, and we're happy for them if they are with them and they're happy. Awesome. If somebody chooses us and they're happy, awesome. That's, yeah. yeah. I agree. I think the the poaching thing. It's funny. Like when I. The show that I won my class of before I went to nationals to get my pro card, I obviously had a coach. It was pretty clear I had a coach, but the the coach of the girl that won the overall at that show, instead of, because I didn't win the overall, I just won my class. 
he like DM'd me asking if I needed a coach. <laughs> I was like, bro, you know, I have a coach like, and it's not like I'm doing that bad. It's just funny what people, what people do. And you're right. Like if you feel the need to coach, then I don't think you're, or poach, I don't think you're really the, as good of a coach as you think you are because you're you're doing okay. We don't have time to do it. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, uh, I don't know if I, well, I, like, you know, if somebody, if your wife, you know, if some guy approaches your wife and you're all like, you know, worried about your wife and whatnot, like it, it's kind of the same thing with the, the clients. It's like, yes, poaching is bad. And if, a, if, if somebody is talking to my clients, trying to get them or whatever. Okay. But I also want my clients to be so committed to me, like so happy with me that, that I don't even have to worry about a single, you can try, try, please try to take my clients because yeah. they're so happy with me that you can say anything you want. It's just same thing with like your wife or your husband or whatever. You're not going to worry about your, your wife everywhere they go or your husband everywhere they go. Like you, you're going to trust that they know how to say no. Like I'm no, I'm, I'm actually in a relationship and I'm very happy to be in it. Like yeah. same thing. It's like, you can't, you can't, you know, beat people by eliminating them or eliminating every other option. Like, hey, yeah, so to be best. except for me, all the other mm -hmm. coaches are bad except for me. They're, they're, you know what I mean? Like that. It's not the the way we try to promote ourselves. It's just, yeah, it's not the way you win. Yeah, but yeah. Just, like in bodybuilding, you just fire your circle, fire your people. Go. Okay, be because um. <laughs> Because it's not it's not about what you do, but who you do it with. So, we, like, just I I don't believe in like do whatever like doesn't matter what you do, just get to the goal. I do believe that it matter how you do it, how you get there. So to choose a mentor, to choose a coach, or to choose an example to follow in your life, I don't just choose somebody that have achieved what I what I want. I want mm -hmm. to. I want to hear their testimony. I want to see how they get there. Because that matters to me more than just get there. Yeah. Agreed. So, how you I, do it is, is yeah. so much more important because that's also what's going to make you do better work as a client is being with a coach that is doing it in the way that works for you and can help you and meet you where you're at. I think a lot of the time clients will fall into the, or athletes will fall into the trap of, just going with a coach because they're a big name or because they're a pro or because, you know, they post you or whatever, or they have good marketing. And at the end of the day, like what's most important is like, do you vibe well with them? Or do they have solid values that you agree with? Are they a good person? You know, th those things really matter long term. Yeah, exactly. Uh, absolutely. I agree. But when I one thing I, I will I will coach with Jimmy forever and 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 that will never change. And it's not because she have one of the biggest team in the industry. It is because of her, who she is, how she how she treat me, how Greg treat me, how her husband treat me and John. And like you said, like we vibe well with them. And it's and it's more than that. I, I wouldn't say just like vibe more with them, but the way she believe in me, the way she treat me, the way she care for me, all of that matters so much more to me than anything else. Does that be like, wow, I have a dream team. I have people that I truly feel comfortable with. I feel like I can trust them in every way. Then that will help you to excel so much as an athlete. And yeah. Yeah, that that would be the advice that I have for anybody that looking for a coach. Like, do your research. Like, you know, ask the question. Maybe multiple coaches too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's an important part. I I always suggest uh, talk to different coaches, ask the question, and actually trying to to see who you who they are. Are they vibe well with you? The way their way of communication is that work for you? Like, not everybody like who, how directly you and I are. We're pretty honest and blind so like buddy like that so buy the one that will work well for you yeah well thank you so much for being on i'm super excited if people want to find you for your gym your coaching your posing how do they find you all right so uh my 
team page is team next level wa uh, on instagram my instagram name is kind of weird <laughs> so it's like it's hyun person is h-u-y-e-n p-e-r-s-o-n person uh ifbb pro so it's it's kind of it's kind of weird i'll have it in the show notes too for anyone wanting to follow emmy yeah but um thank you so much for having us and thank you for letting us like just get all over the place and share a part of us and um, share who we are and i feel really comfortable talking to you always as in person and on here and this doesn't feel like a podcast or anything it just feel like a good conversation with a good friend who i feel very comfortable with um yeah well that's what i try to make this about and just like elevating people like yourself that are doing badass shit and really good at what they do and have some kind of value to share with the world so thank you for being on i'm excited hopefully but i think by the time this will be released i think you'll probably be olympia qualified but we'll we'll see i'm pretty sure though yeah we we, we are not stopping i just take a wake up break here to take care of the gym but i uh i'm probably will do a few more shows this year hopefully we qualify very soon good all right girl well thank you so much Thank you guys for listening.